What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the vlog. Thanks for pressing play. Today we're going to be talking about the pros and the cons of daily driving a Corvette. All right guys, so number one on the pros list for daily driving a Corvette is going to be its presence. <laughs> Drive a car like this, you're going to have a lot of what I call smiles per gallon. You're not gonna get so many miles per gallon, but you will get a lot of smiles per gallon because these cars are insanely fun to drive and they're just something that it's gonna make you feel good. If you're driving to your job that you absolutely hate, you're gonna like to drive in this guy. So pro number two for daily driving a Corvette is you don't really have to buy another car. Now, assuming you don't live in the far north like I do where Pennsylvania weather and winter especially just kind of messes with your cars. If you're in the southern states, you really don't have to have a second car. You can daily drive these and you wouldn't have to own a separate car paying separate insurance, a separate car payment, all that stuff. You could have just one and daily drive it. Pro number three with the Corvettes is, of course, the attention factor. With every Corvette purchase comes a ticket to the Corvette community. And like it or not, you're going to be part of that community and you're going to get the attention with a Corvette. It doesn't matter whether you buy a C5, a C6, C7, people are going to notice it and you are going to be part of that community and it's gonna be awesome. So pro number four is going to be comfort. So the cars in general from the C5 and up have some sort of mag ride capability so the car can have the aggressiveness of the suspension adjusted on the fly. On the interior portion, the seats are pretty good. So on the C5, they were, on the C6, they were okay. C7 and up, they started to really get better as far as form fitting, but even with the seats in the C6 that weren't the best, they're still pretty comfortable. I've taken my 2020 C8 Corvette on a cross country trip before and had no problem with comfort. The mag ride adjustability of the suspension, like I mentioned, was able to keep the car riding soft enough that it was a pleasurable experience and you're in a car that is as cool as a Corvette. The Corvettes in general have always used pretty high quality leather on the interior, but with the C7s and the C8s, again, they started to really up the game and started the use of carbon fiber, aluminum, really high quality leather, and just higher quality components. With the C6, the quality of the leather was still good, but the interior quality overall was a little less than what the newer Corvettes are gonna give you. Either way, it is still a comfortable experience. Pro number five for daily driving your Corvette is going to be versatility. So the car is really good at a bunch of different things. You can go to Walmart and pick up your groceries. You can go to Lowe's and pick up a pretty large order of wood, or you can go to the drag strip or the track with this thing with very minimal setup in between maybe no setup if you don't really wanna change your alignment and stuff like that. Either way, the versatility of this thing is off the charts whenever it's compared to your normal daily driver car. So pro number six is going to be cargo space. So believe it or not, one of the biggest pros of the Corvette in general is just how much cargo space there really is. So you can fit your groceries, you can fit lawn chairs, whatever it is that you may wanna put in here, there is a, an extreme amount of space to use in the C6 and the C7 especially. The C8 has a lot as well, but it breaks it up a little bit differently. Now with the C7 and the C8, you can actually still pop the top off, store it in the back, and still have room for groceries. So if we put the top down here into the back, underneath it, you'll still have your room for groceries as well as in front of it, in front of the cargo shade there. So you can still have your convertible and have your cargo space. That's the beauty of it. Now we're gonna move on to the cons, guys. We got the first con is of course gonna be gas mileage. Now, this is not something that you're gonna be shattering records with because these cars both are not horrible on gas, but they're not the best either. And ultimately, this really could kind of be presented as a pro based on how often you're gonna be at the gas pump and how often you're gonna to talk to people about how awesome your cars are. Now, I'll be, I'll be honest with you. The C6 and the C7, they both gain a lot of attention for me whenever I'm at the gas pump. So your mileage would probably be the same. And when you're there, you get to make some friends. The Corvette community is really an amazing place to be, especially when you're behind the wheel of one of these guys. So con number two for daily driving a Corvette is the fact that it is a two-seater. Obviously, you're not going to be taking any more than one additional person with you. If you have any kids, this is obviously a deal breaker, but at the same time, it is also pretty cool to drive a two-seater car. 
Your mileage may vary if you have a girlfriend or a wife and that's it. The two seater is for you. You can daily drive one of these things, no problem. But if you do have kids, this is a con. Unfortunately, you will not be able to strap them into the rear cargo area. <laughs> so con number three is going to be, these things are fast. Now you might ask yourself, why is that a con, Justin? Well, I'll tell you what, if you don't have the best self-control, these things are gonna get you in trouble. The C6 and up especially, they're pretty fast from factory. I've seen some pretty crazy built C4s and C5s as well that will obviously still get you in trouble, but just sticking to the stock setup, these cars can get you into a lot of trouble if you don't have the best self-control. Don't ask me how I know. Con number four is going to be ride quality. Now I talked about this before as being a pro and the fact that the car does ride pretty well, but make no mistake, this is not your grandmother's Cadillac. This thing is not going to glide over the bumps. It is a sports car and with a sports car comes a sports car suspension. This thing is going to let you feel the potholes, the cracks in the roads. It's also going to give you the feedback that a sports car would give you and that's a good thing and a bad thing. If you're not loving the idea of feeling every pothole on every single disgustingly bad road that you have, <coughs> Pennsylvania, then maybe it's not the best car for you. Your mileage may vary. Obviously I'm putting this as a con because in my opinion, it can be too much for some people. So con number five of daily driving a Corvette is especially going to apply to the older Corvette. The new C8 Corvette doesn't so much fit into this category, but with the C7s, the C6s, the C5s, etc., the cost of repair. Now this is not gonna be the same uh, as cost of maintenance. That's totally different. Cost of repair. If I were to wreck this car, or if someone were to hit me or something along those lines, getting the parts for these cars has become extremely difficult, especially the ZR1. If this carbon fiber wing got damaged in any way, shape or form, these things are almost impossible to find right now, especially from GM. You're talking about three to $5,000 and probably at least 12 months before you would actually have one of these. The front splitter is the same kind of thing. The whole front end of the car is specific to the ZR1. So the front fenders, the hood, the bumper, the splitter, all of those items are very difficult to get right now. And the C6 Z06 that I have is the same kind of story. Those cars aren't made anymore, so the parts are kind of hard to come by. So the cost of repair is something you would want to keep in mind, especially if you are daily driving this for long amounts of time, for many miles at a time. So if you have a long daily drive, a long commute to work, it is more likely that you could get into an accident or that something could go wrong with the car. And at that point, cost of repair could potentially negatively affect your decision to daily drive one of these. So con number six of daily driving a Corvette is going to be just how low they sit. Now, obviously recently I lowered my ZR1, so it sits pretty low, but this C6 here is untouched. This is the stock ride height. And as you can see, there is not a lot of ground clearance here. So if you live in a state that has really poor roads and a lot of high angle driveways, this might not be the best bet for you, especially with the front splitters and things like that. If you go with an older car like the C4, those ride a little bit higher, but still at the end of the day, these are sports cars. They are going to ride low. This is something you're gonna to wanna to keep an eye on. And if you do decide to daily drive it, consider this a disposable item because you are going to be replacing it. All right, guys, so that is gonna do it for the list of pros and cons for daily driving your Corvette. It's really kind of gonna come down to those items as far as I'm concerned, because for most people, you either can do this or you can't, when, especially when it comes to living in the North or the Southern states, that's really going to be the biggest determining factor. I've said for a long time, if I ever move South, I could sell a lot of the other cars I have and just daily drive my Corvette because they are that easy to daily drive and they're fun to daily drive, so why not? But of course, your mileage may vary, so ultimately it is up to you, but I just wanted to give you those six pros and six cons to kind of hopefully help you in your decision process. If you liked what you saw, please smash that thumbs up button. Let me know you're liking the content so we can keep creating this kind of stuff for you. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments section down below. Subscribe if you haven't yet, so you don't miss any of the future content coming, and I will catch you in the next upload.